Blessed morning, welcome in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to our live stream viewers, to St. John Evangelical Lutheran Church in Waverly, Iowa, on this Utica Sunday, the fifth Sunday in Lent, which is also the first Sunday of Passion Tide. On Utica, we uh, begin yet another descent into our penitential observations. Uh, we will say farewell to the Gloria of Patri today, as we have already said farewell to the Gloria in Excelsis and the Alleluia along our Lenten journey. These will all be joyfully resurrected on the Feast of the Resurrection of our Lord on Easter Sunday. Also, it is customary that we veil crucifixes on this day. Uh, we have done that the last several years here at St. John, uh, but we've always done it prior to uh, the service. So when you come in in the morning, uh, the veils are already in place. But the older tradition, uh, which we will be observing this year, is to actually veil the crosses after the reading of the gospel, which ends with the words, and Jesus hid himself from them. Several announcements to share with you today. First of all, I want to thank Marvin and Travona Dravis, uh, who has given the flowers. Uh, we don't put them on the altar during Lent. That is um, not my personal custom. That's a, that's a church custom that goes way back. But we have allowed for flowers to be put up front for special occasions during Lent. And this is a special occasion that Marvin and Travona do every year in loving memory of their granddaughter, Brittany Lohman, and to the glory of God. So we thank you for that um, observance today. Um, some announcements today. We'll have Sunday School and Bible Study after church. Um, on Wednesday is our final midweek Lenten service at 1 o'clock with communion. And again at 7 o'clock it'll be Vespers. Our final Lenten supper will be at 5 o'clock to 6.30. A garden club is going to provide soup. Um, that's always a good one. They've all been good, every one of them this year. Um, and there will be confirmation catechesis at 5 o'clock. Thursday we have Bartles at 10, and then Wartburg at 8 o'clock in the evening, and Friday we have our 9 o'clock Bible study. Saturday will be our final First Communion class at 9 a.m., and then Sunday is Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week. What's going on Holy Week? Well, first of all, Palm Sunday is a very celebratory day, and we will have First Communion for six of our young people uh, who have been going through catechesis um, during our Lenten observances. Um, and then uh, there will be no service on Wednesday during Holy Week. I will continue to announce that. That's because we'll have ser service on Thursday night for Monday Thursday at 7 p.m. And on Friday night at 7 p.m., our Good Friday Tenebrae service. On Saturday of Holy Week, so this is a week from Saturday, um, we'll have a vigil service at St. Paul Lutheran Church in Fredericksburg. I encourage as many of you that can to attend this. It'll start at 7 o'clock. And uh, it's a very beautiful service that begins outdoors with the striking of a new fire, the lighting of the new Paschal candle. Uh, we process into the darkened sanctuary, bearing candles, proclaiming the light of Christ. A number of Old Testament readings are read. Um, the liturgy prescribes 12. I don't know if we're going to do 12 or not. Uh, and then uh, there's the Easter Gospel and Communion, and the first shout of Alleluia actually happens that Saturday night which in Jewish thinking is actually the beginning of Sunday, the first day of the week, the third day as Jesus' resurrection. So that'll be at um, St. Paul Lutheran Church in Fredericksburg on Holy Saturday before Easter. On Easter Sunday, we will have breakfast here from 7.30 to 8.30, so do sign up for that if you haven't, that you're going to attend the breakfast. There's also a sign-up sheet for um, supplies they need for the breakfast, if you can donate some of those things. And uh, then we'll have our service at 9 o'clock, as always. Uh, last couple things to share with you. Um, we're having a retirement open house for Mary Stilly on Saturday, April 6th from 2 to 4. Hope you can attend that. If you can't, uh, we put her address in the bulletin for you. If you could, would like to send her a card um, and, a, and a love gift, that would be nice. Uh, there's a grief workshop at Emanuel um, Klinger in, in Klinger Reedland. That'll be... Um, April 13th, that's a Saturday from 8.30 a.m. to 12. Uh, Pastor Chris Kincaid is going to be leading that workshop. And I think there's some pink gift bags back there. There are uh, that have the names of some of our shut-ins on them. If you would like to grab a bag or two and deliver them to those shut-ins, uh, that would be a nice Easter uh, gift to have a visit from someone in the congregation. 
and let them know that we're thinking of them and giving them a little bit of joy. So um, do check that out. Uh, and at the end of service today, our uh, congregation chairman, Jason Gate, is going to have a very, very brief message for you. So we're going to ask you to stay seated in the pews for just a few minutes after the service. Thank you very much for that. Um, our opening hymn today is 432, In Silent Pain, the Eternal Son. We'll have a moment of silent prayer and meditation, the ringing of the bells, and we'll join together in our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth, I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce God's grace unto you, 
And in the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, by your great goodness, mercifully look upon your people, that we may be governed and preserved evermore in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for Judica, the fifth Sunday in Lent, is from Genesis, the 22nd chapter. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here am I. He said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, 
and took two of his young men with him and his son, Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took in his hand the fire and the knife. So they went, both of them together. And Isaac said to his father Abraham, My father, <clears throat> And he said, Here am I, my son. He said, Behold, the fire and the wood. Where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went, both of them, together. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built there an altar and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle text is from Hebrews, the ninth chapter. But when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy places, not by the means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood thus securing an eternal redemption. For if the sprinkling of defiled persons with the blood of goats and bulls and with the ashes of a heifer sanctifies for the purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Therefore, he is the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance, since a death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions committed under the first covenant. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I came from God and I am here. I came not of my own accord, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to hear my word. You are of your father, the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and has nothing to do with the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character for he is a liar and the father of lies. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which one of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? Whoever is of God hears the words of God. The reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. The Jews answered him, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. The Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, as did the prophets. Yet you say, If anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who died, and the prophets died? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my father who glorifies me, of whom you say, He is our God. But you have not known him. I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. But they picked up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out from the temple. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise We join together in making confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The first gospel proclaimed in the Holy Scriptures occurs quite early in Genesis 3.15. Immediately following our first parents' rebellion against God and His Word, and their consequent fall into sinful concupiscence and its fruits of spiritual death now, physical and eternal death and time to come for themselves and for all their progeny. 
The first gospel actually comes as part of the curse uttered by God to Satan. I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Our first parents understood that the Lord intended to provide a human man, a son of their own flesh, who would destroy the power of Satan even as he himself suffered a fatal wound from the devil. And so literally and immediately did they understand this good news, this gospel, that when Eve gave birth to her firstborn son, to Cain, she believed that that gospel had already been fulfilled. And she exclaimed, I have gotten a man, the Lord. However, Cain was not the promised Messiah. In fact, Cain became the first murderer, shedding the blood of his brother Abel. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. You see, origins matter. Who's your daddy matters. Adam and Eve had plunged themselves and all of God's creation into sin, corruption, decay, and death. Adam was a sinner, bound to die. Eve was a sinner, bound to die. Together, all they could produce from their flesh were sinners, bound to die. And this is as true for you and for me as it was for our first parents, for Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, for our parents, our grandparents, great-grandparents, for all. Everything that we produce from our own flesh, our words, our thoughts, our deeds, our children, are sinful, corrupt, decaying, and destined for death. Thus did St. Paul exclaim, Who will deliver me from this body, this body of death? The scribes and the Pharisees in particular, the children of Israel in general, prided themselves that they all had Abraham as their father. Their fear, their love, their trust, their self-righteous security was not in the Lord, but it was in their blood descent and their lineage from the man that they called their father, Abraham. However, Abraham was no less a sinner, corrupt and destined for death, than was his father, Terah, and his father before him. So to be a child of Abraham and of the gospel promise and of the covenant the Lord made to him, which was truly a reiteration of that first gospel promise made to Satan in the hearing of our first parents in the garden, that meant to be a spiritual descendant of Abraham. That is, believing and trusting the word of the Lord just as their spiritual father Abram had done so many centuries before. Thus did Jesus say to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I came from God and I am here. Why is it that you do not understand what I say, Jesus said? It is because you cannot bear to hear my word. If God were your father, you would love me. But you are of your father, the devil. And your will is to do your father's desires. And then showing them that their sinful, blind misunderstanding was really no different than that of Adam and Eve's at the, at the birth of Cain. Jesus said to them, he, Satan, was a murderer from the beginning. He has nothing to do with the truth because there's no truth in him. When he lies, he's simply speaking out of his own character. For he is a liar. He is the father of lies. It is Jesus who is the true son of Abraham, the true son of the Lord's promise to Abraham, the true seed of the woman who would bruise, even crush the serpent's head. When the Lord commanded Abraham to offer his son Isaac as a sacrifice to test his faith and his trust, Abraham believed and trusted in the Lord once again as he did when the Lord first called him and made his covenant promise to him to provide him a land and a son and people through whom all the nations of the earth should be blessed. The Lord spared Abraham's promised son Isaac 
provided a lamb, a ram as a sacrifice and a substitute, just as Abraham had prophesied as they made their way to the mountain, saying, God will provide for himself the lamb for a sacrifice, my son. Abraham sacrificed that ram that was caught in a thicket by its horns in place of his son of promise, Isaac. But Abraham believed, knew, and confessed that that ram was a type and a foreshadowing of the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, whose blood would take away the sins of the world. That is what Jesus meant when he said to the scribes and the Pharisees, your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it, and he was glad. What Abraham saw was that God would indeed provide a sacrificial lamb that would be a substitute not only for his son of promise, Isaac, but for all men of all times and all places. The Lord spared Abraham's son and kept his covenant promise that through an heir from Abraham's own flesh, he would bless all the nations of the world. Abraham's son was spared and lived, and he became the father of Jacob and the father of 12 tribes of Israel. But the Lord's only begotten son, his beloved, he did not spare, but he gave him over as a sacrifice to atone for the sins of all humanity. Of this the preacher to the Hebrews proclaims, when Christ appeared as the great high priest of the good things that have come, through the greater and more perfect tent not made by hands, that is not of this creation, he entered once and for all into the holy places, not by the means of the blood of goats and calves, but by the means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. In Jesus' death, Isaac was redeemed. Abraham was redeemed. Adam and Eve, you and I, and all humankind were redeemed. All those conceived of the seed of man are conceived and born in sin, bound for death. But Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit and the seed of the woman. Jesus' father was not a human man, but God himself was his father. Thus he bore not the taint and corruption, sin and death of original sin. The death he died was not for his own sin, but for your sin and all men, the sin of the world. God, his father, offered up his innocent son as a sin offering for your sin and guilt. Jesus, God's son, willingly laid down his life in love and obedience for his father and for you. And the Holy Spirit was given to create faith in your hearts that you may trust in Jesus and become true sons of Abraham, born not of the flesh, not of the will of a man, but born of the Spirit. And if God is your father then you will love Jesus, and you will love his word, and you will listen to, believe, and trust in his son, his word made flesh, crucified, died, risen, reigning, and returning. Whoever is of God hears the words of God. Two weeks ago, on Oculi, the third Sunday in Lent, we heard about how the scribes and the Pharisees accused Jesus of casting out demons by the power of Beelzebul, by the power of Satan himself. That was blasphemy. That was the sin against the Holy Spirit. For it was the Holy Spirit who Jesus called the finger of God, in and through the word of God, who exercised the demons. Well, today, once again, we hear the scribes and the Pharisees utter blasphemy by calling the work of the Holy Spirit in and through Jesus the work of demons and the devil. Thus, Jesus now pronounces his harshest rebuke of the scribes and the Pharisees, saying, you are of your father, the devil. Their accusations continue, even in the face of this clear fulfillment of the word of the Lord in Jesus' teaching and miracles. Like Pharaoh of, har of old, they hardened their hearts again and again against the word of the Lord, against Jesus, against the work of the Holy Spirit. Hearing they do not hear, seeing they do not see. For what is the sin against the Holy Spirit but a willful, intentional rejection and opposition to the Holy Spirit? Such sin is unforgivable 
because it is only the Holy Spirit who can create and sustain faith. It is only the Holy Spirit that can turn a heart into repentance. And if he is rejected and refused, then there is no possible salvation. The scribes and the Pharisees knew precisely whom Jesus claimed to be, and they, that he backed it up with the clear word of the Lord and with miraculous signs fulfilling messianic prophecy. When they rejected Jesus, they knew who they were rejecting. Thus, when Jesus finally proclaimed the divine name of Yahweh for himself, saying, Before Abraham was, I am. They reacted violently, full of rage and hatred. They attempted to stone him to death for blasphemy. As Satan was a murderer from the beginning, so are his children, murderers, hateful and liars. They cannot convict Jesus of sin, therefore they call his holy works by the Holy Spirit sinful and demonic. That is blasphemy. To call the work of the Holy Spirit demonic. They call good evil and evil good, just like their father Satan. Yes, origins matter. Who's your daddy matters. If you have God as your father, you will love his son and listen to his word. The Holy Spirit will make his home with you and protect you and keep you, equip you and send you as light into this world of sin, death, and darkness. As Jesus taught his disciples, his mother and his brothers, his family, those who hear the word of the Lord and keep it, are his family. Well, you are the true spiritual children of Abraham. You are the new Jerusalem, for you are marked and named and claimed as God's own children in holy baptism. You are marked and claimed with that circumcision of the heart, with that rebirth of the spirit. You have been judged already. You have been vindicated. You've been declared not guilty in the holy, innocent, shed blood of Jesus the Passover lamb of God's offering. And because of this, you need not fear death. For truly, you will never taste it. You have already died. You have died in Christ, and you have been raised in him. The second death cannot harm you. Yes, Abraham died. Yes, the prophets died. Yes, you will die. But death cannot hold you, because it could not hold your Jesus. And you are baptized into Jesus, into his death and resurrection. But those who reject Jesus, those who reject God's word, those who reject the Holy Spirit cannot be saved. For there truly is no other way. You will be rejected. You will be rejected by those who reject Jesus. For the disciple is not above his teacher. As they did to him, so they will do to you. Today our Lenten pilgrimage to the cross intensifies as we meditate more deeply upon Jesus' passion and our sins for which he suffered and died. Jesus is our ram caught in the thicket of biting whips, piercing thorns and nails. Nonetheless, take heart, have hope, and be comforted. For you have been vindicated. You have been judged not guilty in the cleansing blood of Jesus. Already you have died. Already you have been raised, born again into a new life that cannot die. Your great high priest, Jesus Christ, has entered into the holy places, the holy presence of God his Father for you with his holy, innocent, shed blood. He is your head. And where the head is, the body will also soon be. Until then, Jesus communes with you. He forgives you, feeds you, strengthens you, preserves and protects you with his precious body and his holy blood. He who has begun this good work in you will bring it to completion in the day of Jesus Christ. Let us give thanks to the Lord, for he is good and his steadfast love endures forever. This is the day that the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let us rise.
Let us stand for prayer as we pray to the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, everlasting Father, you saw Israel in their despair and raised them up to hope by planting your Holy Spirit and placing it upon them.